Uh, my name is Mandy Nash. I'm a jewellery and textile designer and uh, I've actually got a studio in the Model House in Cantrasset. Uh, I moved there from London in 1990. So um, I've been in Wales for 26 years now. I first discovered the Makers Guild um, on a visit to Cardiff. Um, I went into the old library where they had their first gallery space and um, I was very interested in becoming involved because I'd just moved to the area and I wanted to meet other craftspeople. Um, so I asked about how to join and um, got the information, applied and became a member. So that was in 1991 when I first became a member of the Makers Guild in Wales. For me, joining the Makers Guild was quite well, very important because I'd moved, from the uh, moved to the area um, I didn't have many friends. Um, I'd left a lot of friends behind in London. Um, so for me, it was uh, a way of networking and meeting like-minded people and um, a way of becoming involved in the craft activity in, in the South Wales area. But very soon after I joined the Makers Guild, um, I had a phone call from um, one of the other members who was on the committee, Anna Adam, um, asking me if I'd like to be exhibitions officer, um, as I had had experience before of organising exhibitions, and I'd worked for the Crafts Council in London. Um, so um, I was a bit taken back by this, because I hadn't long been a member, but um, I thought it was a good way to, to meet people and become involved, so I joined the committee as the exhibitions officer. The role of the exhibitions officer was a, vol a voluntary role and it was basically organising exhibitions for, for the Makers Guild. Um, at that time um, we had the gallery in the old library but that was a very temporary affair. We weren't quite sure how long we were going to have the space for. So it was important to, for, for, the, for the Guild to exhibit elsewhere um, and over the time that I was exhibitions officer, um, we, we, we exhibited at the West Deptford, um, in um, Oil Merlin in Carmarthen. Oh, I mean, we, we, the exciting thing is it also took us overseas. We had contacts with Brussels and we exhibited in a gallery in Brussels. We went to Nantes as part of an arts festival there. Um, so it really I got me involved and um, I was just kind of jumping straight in and it was, it was a wonderful experience as, as well as being good for my work. It was also a good, a good social, I met lots of lovely friends and it, um, socially it was a good, good fun thing to do as well. Yeah, part of the role um, was looking for, for funds to help support the, the exhibition program and um, we did, I did, um, at that time there was um, funding available through the Welsh Development Agency and we applied successfully then for some funding and um, we went to Nantes and um, also for the Arts Council we applied for small sums of money from the Arts Council. In those days it was much smaller sums of money than it is now. Um, it was it was good training for me to learn all these new skills because um, I, something I had not done before was fundraising, and ironically, the skills that I learned through being a voluntary exhibitions officer um, gave me the opportunity to apply for paid work. So I I did work for many years part time um, doing arts admin working on arts admin projects. I helped to organise the Women's Arts Festival and um, I organised many events for Craft Forum Wales um, with, with exhibitions in Japan and Barcelona. So that original opportunity working voluntarily gave me skills which I was later able to use to gain employment, which is very good. I see volunteering as a way of gaining an insight into how an organisation runs. Um, it's also um, 
I have quite strong socialist principles and I feel that you should always give back to the community which serves you in the craft community is very important to me on, on many levels. Um, so, But it also, by volunteering, you gain experience and you meet people, like-minded people. So it's a two-way role, I find, that if you give, you get back. And um, well, since volunteering for you know, the Skills in Wales, um, I've, I also um, have had roles in the Women's Arts Association. And recently now, I'm vice I'm chair of the International Filmmakers Association, which is another voluntary role, but um, very important to me because it takes me all over the country, um, and I've met some wonderful people through doing that. I think over the past like, 26 years, um, my volunteering, my voluntary roles, um, are those that have become part of my life. Um, I work very hard on my own business, but I see um, the voluntary roles that I take um, are also part of my social life and my business because they also give me opportunities within my own work. Um, I was chair of the Makers Guild in Wales, and I can't remember the dates now because it was many, many years ago. Um, but I thought it was important, and I, I do feel quite proud of the fact that while I was part of the, the, the voluntary well, within the Makers Guild, that we did secure vast amounts of funding to create this wonderful space here and um, create something which hopefully will last for a very, very long time. So I think as volunteers working together, you're so much stronger than working as an individual and you can create things that will endure. Through my voluntary roles, um, I've met very many good friends. Um, it's, it's, for, for me, it was a very good way when I moved to the area of making good contacts. And I, I believe that Working as a group, you're much stronger than working as an individual, and that knowledge and contacts and information is passed on by just being with other like-minded people. So, that working as a volunteer is, a, is, a, is almost like a, a path into that network, um, and it also, as a group of people working together. Um, you get a far more sense of achievement of what, what you can do, um, like creating this gallery. Um, and with my role that currently with the International Filmmakers Association, the organisation has grown considerably. We've become far more international, which is a, a, our aim. And we're working on very positive ways of growing the organisation. And I think it's very important to, to feel that you actually Achieving improving for other people. There's a definite, I think, link um, with volunteering and um, and it's improving your your social networks and helping your own development in your work. Um, in Wales, um, a lot of people feel very isolated. Um, because it's, it's a big country and um, the transport structure within Wales infrastructure isn't good for actually keeping contact with people. Cardiff is, is, is very good because it's a big city, but as soon as you move out of Cardiff and to West Wales and the Mid Wales, we know many of the Christ people there feel very isolated. So having an organisation like the Major Sport that is a central contact, I think is really important for the general cross community in Wales and that they do see that there's a point of contact for them to come and meet like-minded people and share skills and experiences. Um, certainly when I lived in London there's it's a much more insular environment but I discovered in Wales it's wonderful how people do 
encourage you and are very keen to work together to create a, a healthier craft economy and environment to work in. As a volunteer, um, it's also really encouraged to um, share skills, um, generally by demonstrating and showing the general public um, what is involved with making. Because a lot of them are ill-educated, if I can put it that way, that they don't realise the time and skill that's involved in making beautiful objects. Um, so I think as, as, as especially within the Makers Guild, um, actually, and also within my role in the International Heart Makers Association, it, part of the role is to um, educate the public on the, the traditional craft skills and so that they're not lost. I think so, some of the best memories I have is when we, um, was when the, when the Guild um, were offered the use of the, the, t the old TechniQuest shed. Um, we, were, we were desperately looking for um, new premises when, when we heard that our lease in the old library had, was going to expire. And um, we, did, we thought then that, that the Cardiff Bay, which was at that time a building site, and uh, not, not, a very, um, not a very attractive place to visit, it's changed considerably in the last 15, 20 years. Um, but we somehow managed to uh, be given the use of the old TechniQuest shed and it was huge <laughs> and, and when we were sort of, oh my goodness, how on earth are we going to create a gallery within this space? Because it was just an old shed really, um, but it was a fantastic experience, all the guild members came together to clean it, to dust it, to paint it, um, to beg, borrow and still display equipment and materials and it was, it was fun as well as hard work to actually turn that space into a, a gallery. That was, yeah, that's, I think that was a real, really brilliant achievement that we did that. I think one, one of the problems of, of um, organisations run by volunteers is, is they kind of, um, run by committees, decisions by committees. It's, it's just you know, to be democratic and fair. You need to have a, an elected committee to run an organisation, especially if it's a charity or not for profit. But at the same time, that does um, slow things down somewhat in that you have to have endless meetings to make decisions before you can actually go ahead and do anything. Um, and coming from a person that works for themselves in their own business, that I just make a decision and I go for it. I don't have to consult anybody else before I do that. It can be frustrating at times um, with, with the endless committee meetings and then finding that a decision has been deferred until the next meeting, that when you're itching to actually get on and go ahead with projects. But, but saying that, if, 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 if that um, structure wasn't in place, then um, nothing would happen because it would be uh, kind of chaotic. I, I stood down from all the committees that I was on um, several years ago, um, I was a trustee, and I was also the um, education officer supporting our, current, uh, our paid exhibitions officer, Charlotte Kingston. Um, I just felt that I'd been involved with the Makers Guild for many, many years, and, and the only way to get newer, younger people involved was actually to stand down totally. Because I think if you're in a, one of the problems of being a volunteer is that um, anybody that's willing to do the work is just let, allowed to get on with it and the only way to find replacements is actually to disappear off the scene and then somebody else has to take on the work. Um, also, I've become involved with the International Film Makers Association, so um, I have to kind of limit the, the amount of hours that I work voluntarily because I've got to run my own business. I took over the education officer role um, after I was exhibitions officer because um, we were only supposed to be in a role for three years. Um, and I took over um, the education side of things when we were 
um, in the Corey's building, which we moved to after we were in the Technico shed, because uh, we had spaces there to run workshops. And so my role then was to organise a work workshop programme, produce the leaflets, distribute them. Um, ultimately, uh, I applied for a grant from to the Arts Council, and uh, which was successful. So we could employ Charlotte to actually do the work. So I no longer had to do it. The, the trustees' role was far more official. Um, the Makers Guild um, committees, and um, when we when we uh, obtained funding, the whole situation had to change. Um, had to become far more official in in the way that we set up our structure. Um, we became a, a charity, and um, it was very complex. We had t two committees. It was. It took us a while to sort out the, the running structure from being a, just a not-for-profit organisation to actually being a constituted charity. So my trustees role was much more official in that we had to um, not so much act for the makers of, of the guild but to ensure that the, that the building that we now own was run in a charitable format that um, we had to run exhibitions as well as the educational programme, so it's not just for the profit of the, of, the, of, of the members. So it was quite a different role to that of when I originally started working as a volunteer, very, very different, much more formal. The Makers Guild changed dramatically once we became a charity and we started employing full-time staff. Um, because previously to that, um, it was run entirely by volunteers with just one full-time member of staff. Um, and then we had a part-time administrator once we had further funding. So over the years, the whole uh, way that the Guild is run has changed from not being run by the members anymore and actually being run by the trustees and paid staff. So, which is a bit sad, I find it quite sad in that um, we've lost that community feeling that we had when we were just run by the, by the Guild members, which was far more social and fun and um, I think because the members were actually involved personally, they had, they felt, more ownership of the whole situation, whereas now I, it, is, it's, it is different. We've lost that sense of community and um, the social engagement that we used to have. The, the, the Makers Guild now is a, is, is a, is a totally different um, concept than it was when it started initially in 1984. Um, but what, not that that's a bad thing um, because it is a totally different um, ideal now that we have a wonderful gallery space which we own. Um, I think we've got one of the better spaces in, in, in Wales showing contemporary craft made in, in Wales. Um, I think we have international status. It, it's, it's just different now to have this space opposite the Wales Millennium Centre within Cardiff Bay is where it's become from what it was when we first moved down here when it was just a, a building site, very muddy and drab. Um, I think being part of this vibrant area is, is incredible, which we wouldn't have foreseen when we were in the old library in Cardiff. Makers Guild members need to um, work here during the year in the gallery um, because without their support we still, I mean, we still don't make enough money to pay full-time staff to run the space. So without the support of, of, the, of the Guild members we, we still wouldn't be able to run this place efficiently. So all of us have to steward um, for allocated times a year depending on how far you live from, from, from the gallery. Um, I, I steward seven days a year and 
Some of the members don't like stewarding, but I really enjoy it because it's a chance to meet other members, see what's going on, see the exhibitions. And running my own business making is, is quite intensive and I have to think hard of what I'm going to do each day. And if I, if a day here is like a day off, I can just do as I'm told and dust and clean and serve people. And it's nice to meet the customers as well, to get them to see what to feedback from them, what they like and generally it's very um, appreciative of this wonderful space to see all this lovely work made in Wales. <laughs> my, my role as Vice Chair within the International Belt Makers Association at the moment um, comprises mostly we're supporting our chairman um, because our chairman is actually based in Switzerland. And, and our organisation is UK based, so I have to do a lot of work within the UK to support, to support her. Um, but the, the main thing that I'm working on at the moment is working with um, um, website designers. We're creating a, a new website um, which will hopefully encourage a lot more new members because it will be internationally and it's a way of groups of people keeping in contact and um, it's going to be a much more of an interactive website so very excited about that, that should be up and running in November. But volunteering for me has, has, well, has been wonderful in that I've made lots of friends when I moved to the area, I've also sent a sense of achievement in what we've actually created and also it's, it's, I've learnt lots of new skills by volunteering. Um, these days I think it's harder to find or to encourage younger people to work as volunteers um, because I think the, the culture of volunteering is, is, is fading away slightly which is, which is a shame. Um, I think older people have been brought up with more of a culture of, of, of volunteering being part of the community, creating a community. Um, I'm, I always talk to people and say that if I hadn't volunteered, I wouldn't have learned how to apply for funding, um, curate exhibitions, um, work as part of a team. So it's taught me lots of skills, which I've been able to put on my CV and get kind of paid work for. So, I am a great advocate of volunteering. Um, it's, I think what you get from a big volunteer um, exceeds the, the small amount of cost of this unpaid time. Work, working as a volunteer and trying to um, encourage more people to volunteer um, is always a bit of a problem. Because if you, if you just ask and say, oh, I want some volunteers, and nobody will actually be kept courageous enough to put their hand up. But I've discovered that if you ask people to do something, and it um, is part of what they enjoy doing, say, for example, somebody's a good at maths and likes working with figures, and if you say, well, can, will you prepare a budget for this? they probably say yes because it's something that they enjoy doing and they feel useful. I think people generally like to be made to feel useful. So I've, I've learned that if you can, the best way to get people to volunteer is to give them a task that they enjoy doing and they can see the end result and they can see that uh, it's, it's achieved something bigger than they would have done by themselves. So. I think that's my tip and to encourage people to volunteer is to um, put them in a situation where they can't say no. <laughs> <laughs>